ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين او بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear listeners and viewers uh, I'm going to give a short talk on zakatul fitr uh, this is the month of Ramadan and one of the uh, practices that have been prescribed in the month of Ramadan is to give out zakatul fitr the meaning of zakatul fitr is an act of charity uh, an act uh, alms that is set aside on account of uh, dropping the fast that is the meaning of al-fitr that is stopping the fast so the zakat is uh, normally done <coughs> at the end of the fasting period this was institutionalized by the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said allah has uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has prescribed zakatul fitr on every uh, on every Muslim, male or female, adult or child, free or slave, and it is to be given a measure, a standard measure, which is called asa, from the staple food that is uh, eaten in the area. Uh, the measure which is called asa is the equivalent of uh, four handfuls of an average uh, adult not a giant and not a dwarf but the measure is well known it is called asa and it is equivalent to four moods the mood is the size of a, uh, of a cup uh, with uh, uh, the, 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 the capacity of which is well known, it has been sold in the markets, and four of those cups, they make up a measure of asa. So this was what was prescribed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The essence of this Zakatul Fitr is to serve as a purification, a purification of, uh, for the person who observed the fasting from what might what normally happens in fasting of vain talk of uh, uh, actions and sayings that are incompatible with the state of fasting so the zakat is, to, is supposed to be an expiation that is a cause of forgiveness uh, a, a way to seek forgiveness of Allah from the misdemeanors that somebody must have observed during uh, the month uh, of Ramadan. Uh, this is one of the wisdom behind the prescription. The second wisdom is to make it a source of feeding for the, uh, for the poor and the ones who do not have what to eat so that they don't have to be begging on the day of Eid. The, uh, the day of Eid is supposed to be a day of happiness a day of joy, a day of uh, having plenty to, to eat and to be happy. So if somebody is deprived of food, that is going to affect his happiness. That is going to affect the joyous moments that he's supposed to, sh to, to share, which comes uh, once in a year. So because of <coughs> this consideration, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prescribed this Zakatul Fitr uh, so that uh, uh, people who, are, who have fasted and who are poor, they will have what to eat and they do not have to beg on that day. That was why it was reported on the authority of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he used to say, Ugnuhum anil mas'ala. Make them, uh, uh, make them have what will suffice for them and take them away from asking people and begging on that day. Uh, it is supposed, uh, it is 
prescribed on every person whether he has fasted or has not fasted in uh, and it is normally the it is the responsibility of the master and the leader of the household to take it out on behalf of himself and, beha and on behalf of all members of his family even if it is a baby that was born before the sun sets on the last day of ramadan he has, to, he, has, he has to give out the zakat on his behalf. But if the birth of the child is after the month of Ramadan has been cited, that is after Maghrib, then he doesn't have to give the zakat on his behalf. But so long as he is alive, whoever is alive during any time in the month of Ramadan, the zakat al-fitr has, has to be taken out on his behalf. And it is the responsibility of the master of the household to do that if he doesn't have and he has access to getting a loan in order to buy the food that you'll give out as the cattle fitter and he hopes that he's going to have ability to repay the loan then the cattle fitter is still incumbent upon him uh, this shows the importance of this the cattle fitter the time for taking it out starts two or three days before the end of Ramadan. That is, on the 27th day of Ramadan, you can start giving it out. The practice of the Prophet wasallam was that he used to appoint uh, representatives. He used to appoint workers to go and sit down in specific places around Medina, in the mosque and in areas where uh, that are easily accessible to people so that households and people Will bring the share. Will bring their zakat al fitr to the collection points, and from that, those collection points, the uh, uh, what was collected will be distributed to uh, the needy. Uh, the essence, uh, the time extends up to uh, the f uh, the morning of Eid before going out for the Eid prayer. The moment the Eid prayer has been prayed. The moment the Eid, the Eid prayer has been observed, then the time for the Zakat al-Fitr has elapsed. It has passed. It has the best of time. The best of time is to give it out after Fajr prayer on the day of Eid before going out to the mosque. But in view of the fact, of, in the, in view of the fact that people normally get preoccupied with preparations to go for Eid, it is better to give it out in the night, on the night of the day of Eid. Uh, and uh, it is preferable, it is also recommended that you don't ask people to come and collect it, but you take it to them. You take it to them in order to uh, secure, in order to maintain their, uh, their dignity. And you don't have to expose them to the, uh, uh, to the stage or state of showing their their need and their uh, 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 going about as though they are beggars. Uh, the the zakat uh, what is taken out of zakat al fitr as I said is staple food. By staple food is meant the food that is most common, uh, like rice, like maize, like millet, like uh, 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 corn. And uh, in, uh, beans also, staple foods that normally are capable of being stored and measured. You cannot take out the cattle fitter from potatoes, nor from yams, because these are not measured. Normally, they are set, they are sold in, uh, <coughs> they are sold, uh, they are sold as uh, tubers, not as uh, as powder. Uh, and uh, you can even also during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it used to be given out from dates because dates were among the most staple of foods in Medina. So <coughs> normally what is chosen as the cattle fitr it should be what is normally uh, eaten by all and sundry in the area where it is uh, going to be uh, taken out. For people who are in areas where they, are, they don't have access to people who will be the true beneficiaries, 
like people that are living outside, students, workers, those in the diaspora, as they normally call them, uh, for them, they can always deputize, appoint someone in their home country where there, uh, there, uh, there is an organized uh, movement, an organized uh, arrangement to give out the zakat. So they can deputize, they can uh, ask the uh, people over in their home country to take out the zakat on their behalf. Uh, in some countries, they have Islamic centers that do receive the zakat al-fitr. But because zakat al-fitr, uh, according to the majority of scholars, is supposed to be given out from the grains, it's not supposed to be given out from the value of what is, uh, 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 from the monetary value of the grains. So that is why you find that it will be better for people living in the diaspora to appoint someone over in their uh, to appoint someone in their home country to purchase the grains and distribute on their behalf. Uh, the person who has been unable to the person who does not give out zakat al fitr, it becomes uh, an, a debt on him, and he has to repay it uh, whenever he has the means. And uh, it is said that. A person's fasting remains hanging. It will not be uplifted to the presence of uh, the Almighty until he has done the zakat al-fitr. Uh, this shows the importance of this zakat. Why it is called zakat? As zakat, the original meaning of zakat is purification. Uh, and as I said, one of the wisdoms of this zakat is to purify the fasting Muslim. Uh, the fasting Muslim uh, male or female uh, over what he has uh, to, to purify him from what he must he might have committed of uh, uh, misactions, misdemeanors during the month of Ramadan. Uh, this is what has uh, uh, no, this is normally what is treated as part of the zakat al fitr, and uh, it is. Uh, one of the standard practices that have been institutionalized during the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to accept our fast and to accept our zakah and to make us witness another Ramadan in several years to come. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد <coughs> viewers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my talk is going to be on charity in islam uh, charity is one of the uh, principal activities that uh, firmly embedded in islam right from the beginning of the message of the quran uh, because allah has sent his prophet with the message of worship uh, of Allah alone which includes devotion to him as well as goodness to creation charity falls under the second category which is goodness to creation even before even before the injunction of giving out the the annual uh, zakah that is levied upon uh, every uh, rich person's wealth, the command of Allah wa ta'ala has come in Mecca that people should give out of their wealth. And uh, one of the causes that was mentioned for people, for the polythe uh, polytheists that end up in hellfire is that they are not uh, exhorting one another to feed 
the poor and the needy and allah tbaraka wa ta'ala said falaqta hamal aqaba wa ma adraka mal aqaba fakku raqaba aw it'amun fi yawmin dhi masghaba yatiman dha maqraba aw miskinan dha matraba the one who rejects the true religion the one who rejects faith why did he not take up the task of going through the difficult task and then he said what is the difficult task the difficult task from wama adraka mal aqaba he said fakku raqaba that is freeing the slave freeing the one in captivity or feeding on the day on a day of hunger feeding uh, the one that is near in relation or the one that is extremely poor this is a verse that was revealed in makkah during the early days the early times of the prophethood of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this has been described as one of the most difficult tasks that is to uh, feed the uh, to, to free the one that is in captivity and to feed the person that is a near relation on a day of extreme hunger or an orphan that is a near relation and that is why a, or, or a needy person which is why the there is no room in, in Islam for people to become dejected because they have to be uh, supported through the acts of charity uh, now charity in Islam uh, falls under two category, categories there is the obligatory charity which is the giving out of the zakah the annual zakah on a person's wealth the categories of wealth for which zakat is due is agricultural produce when it reach when it reaches a certain measure that one is not tied to any time period the moment you harvest you have to give out a portion of what you have harvested for the good of the downtrodden the second category is animal husbandry livestock and the livestock for which zakat is levied are camels cows and sheep uh, these are the only livestock that uh, have been specified for zakat if you engage uh, and then the last category is wealth gold silver and currency and under this wealth falls also all other types of business uh, commodities you have to give out zakat once in a year for each of these categories there is a limit uh, th there is a minimum amount a threshold which is called the nisab which if it is attained uh, uh, if your wealth reaches that level you will give it out now this is obligatory and the beneficiaries to this kind of charity they have been identified in the quran there are eight categories the poor the needy the poor are the ones that do not have anything at all and the needy are the ones that do have but what they have is not enough and then the ones who are working for the collection and distribution of that zakah and the wayfarer the one who is a traveler and uh, he he is without provision even if he is rich in his land and then the one who is indebted uh, and uh, the one the captive who will be given the zakat to get him uh, to set him free and the uh, sp uh, spending it in the way of allah that is in protecting the religion and in fighting for the cause of allah wa ta'ala to make the religion of allah supreme these are the categories of uh, beneficiaries of this charity the second category of zakah is the a uh, supererogatory charity the recommended charity and that one every act of uh, giving which includes sadaqa that is the alms that you give which also includes endowments that you set up and this a perpetual this is what is regarded as a perpetual charity that will outlive your life an example of this uh, is normally called al waqf an example of this is what was bequeathed and endowed by the 
uh, companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the third Caliph, Uthman bin Affan. He, uh, he bought a well, a very famous well in Medina, and dedicated it as a charity. Now that well, in time, it was, uh, the water was used to water a lot of uh, orchards in and around Medina, to the extent that those orchards, they became the ownership of that well, of that endowment. And uh, with urban urbanization and development of uh, the, the city of Medina, the value of the land, the value of the orchards became so high that they were able uh, to convert that orchard into uh, a hotel, a high-rise hotel within the vicinity of the Prophet's mosque. And it is called the Waqf of Uthman bin Affan. And they opened an account. Into that account is paid monies that had accrued from the income, the rental income on that hotel. So this is a charity which was established over 1400 years ago. And the one who established it, it, who established it is still receiving the reward for the sake of Allah. This is a kind of recommended and supererogatory charity uh, which is called Waqf. And it is the basis of the trust that we have now, the trust that people uh, make for the benefit of uh, different categories of beneficiaries. Among the supererogatory charity in Islam also is wasiya, that is you give a will, you leave a will to specified beneficiaries which will become uh, enforceable after the death of the benefactor. Uh, and among the acts of charity also is gifts. Now this recommended charity, it is highly recommended in Ramadan because as reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most generous of people. And the greatest, uh, his, his generosity is at its peak during the month of Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam, the archangel, when he meets him, uh, and they study the Quran together. When he is, after meeting Jibril, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more generous than a strong wind that is blowing. Uh, you know, the way a strong wind blows, it, it carries and spreads everything. So the Prophet's generosity was described in this parable, that he is more generous than a strong blowing wind. This is in the month of Ramadan. So the, the month of Ramadan is a month when charity is highly encouraged in, in obedience to the, in conformity to the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The essence of charity in Islam is for you to get purification. It's for you to get purification. The Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam said, الَّذِي يُعْطِي مَالَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى Hellfire, the one who is highly, the, the most God-fearing, will be taken far away from it. He is the one, الَّذِي يُعْطِي مَالَهُ يُعْطِي مَالَهُ يَتَزَكَّى He is the one who gives out his wealth, seeking purification. So the essence of charity is that it purifies you, it purifies your heart. It purifies you from the harmful effect of miserliness uh, and covetousness. These are acts of lack of generosity, the acts of selfishness, the acts of aggrandizement, the way for you to get, uh, uh, to, to get, to be set free from these evil practices is through charity. Uh, and it has the impact, the social impact also of benefiting others, of sharing, and of making uh, people to have a share in what, uh, uh, in the portion that is given to the rich people, which has the effect of creating social cohesion and love and respect between the haves and the have-nots. It also has the impact of providing for social mobility. When Allah wa Taala mentioned the way the, the wealth that has come to the nation is supposed to be distributed, and he mentioned the beneficiaries. He said, So that wealth 
will not be cycling among the rich, among you only. That is, there is provision for social mobility. Now, all this shows the significance of this uh, institution in our religion of Islam. May Allah make us among those who are charitable in their acts.